Welcome guys, welcome to this video. In this video we are going to see the triggers in MySQL. So basically when um, we do insert data or delete data or perform any action in database tables, we can trigger some event and do some activities in database tables, some other database tables. So we will see in this video why the triggers used, what triggers are, and you will see some examples that will make the concept quite clear for you. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is why we use triggers. Let's see an example that will make things clear. So let's say you update in your database, in your application, you make an update query to database that updates the table. You can see here the table. And then table is triggering trigger one, trigger two, trigger three. So it is a triggering three events. Now in this image, I'm uh, showing the example of update, which is going to table. Then there are three events getting triggered to some different tables. It can be create or delete any event. So you run a query from PHP or any language to database. For example, in this image, we are updating it. Then it goes and update a table. And based on that update, we update some second or third table, which is triggered by MySQL, not by uh, the programming language that we used okay so let's see some examples that will make things clear so here i have the mysql workbench it's a free tool you can download it and connect your databases so currently i have the zox local database where we have these tables so uh what i'm going to do i'm going to run a query here and again to show you the example how trigger work so first of all, I want to create uh, orders table. I already prepared a few queries, so I'm just going to copy, paste, and run those queries here. I'm going to paste here first query, which is create orders table. And order ID going to be the integer, or it is going to be auto increment. So the ID always gets uh, one, two, three, four each in, in uh, incrementing order whenever any new rec record goes in. It's, it's going to be the primary key. Now the customer name, we will have our chart, so 50 characters, various characters we can store there. Then we have order date, where we will store date, and then we have the amount, where we are storing decimal to up to two decimal points. So what I do, I run this, and it is going to um, create a table inside this uh, database. So I run this query, and here, when I go and refresh, we get uh, the orders tables created. Currently, it is going to be empty. Uh, so uh, when I double click on this table, you will see we have columns, indexes, foreign keys, and the last one is triggers. So any triggers we store or create are going to go inside this here. Currently, we don't have any trigger, so it is not showing any, but we very soon we are going to create one. All right, guys, so now I want to create another table, which is going to be order history. It is going to have all the records related to orders. So I'm going to copy and paste here order history so we are just saying here they're going to be history id similarly auto increment primary creed is going to be uh, then order id going to be integer and then we have the varchar which is action 255 characters allowed and the action date all right so what i'm going to do i'm going to run this as well and it creates the table so we refresh here and we get here order history so i open it the exact same way we have triggers here as well but we haven't created any trigger so we should we will not see any trigger there okay so now let's create a trigger so that we what we do we are going to create an order when we create an order automatically we will create a trigger which is going to insert that order detail into order history okay and that will show us how it all works so let's dive in I am going to delete this query and I'm going to paste here the query for creating trigger. Now let's see what is happening. This is the, basically the syntax. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove from here and here inside you can put anything. Okay, let me show you. So we have delimiter to turn off this option to Remove this LFLF, so okay, now this looks much better. So we have delimiter, and we are saying that delimiter is um, slashes, double slashes. 
So basically, by default, delimiter is in MySQL semicolon, but in we can use in between the, in this portion in our code if we want to use semicolon, it is going to conflict and create conflict with MySQL because it will uh, act as a delimiter. So we are saying, okay, uh, from starting this line, this is the delimiter. And uh, by the end of this code, we are saying, okay, we are changing it back. Now delimiter is semicolon. So in between this portion, we can use semicolon as we want. It is not going to conflict. That's what is basically happening here. Other than that, we have here create statement, just the way you create a table. You have here create trigger. Then you have trigger name. We are saying here order insert trigger because we will be inserting order in orders tables and then we want to trigger something. So this makes sense, then order insert trigger. Then we have, now then we are saying after insert on orders. So this trigger will check when the, uh, something gets inserted in orders table then this table is going to run. So, so for each row, like for every single time an order comes, every single record comes in order table, this is going to begin and run this query, whatever we put here. So I added here some content for now, just to show you that we can put query here. And here you can put multiple queries if you want to. But for now, for our example, we will be using only single query here. Then we are saying end of uh, double slashes. Don't take it as a delimiter. And here we say delimiter is back to semicolon. All right. Now let's create this trigger. I need to change this some content with a query. So what I do here, I'm going to copy and paste the query I prepared already. So I'm going to put it right here. Okay. So what we are saying, we are saying insert into order history, order ID, action and action date values we are getting the values new value from order underscore id now now new order id it's going to be auto increment here if i go to order history there is columns i open this there is order id okay so it is going to be inserted that then the second thing we are inserting the action which is order inserted it's a simple string and the time now is going to insert the time run this let's see what happens so i run it i get a success here and then i go to the uh, you need to refresh now as we are running it on the orders we are having it here order insert trigger okay so now i'm going to run a query which is going to insert a demo order and that demo order is going to do what it is going to insert record here and then this trigger will fire and this, it is going to insert the record in order history. All right, so I put here the query. Only I'm saying here simply insert into orders, the customer name, order date, total amount, three values, customer name is given, date is given, and the order amount. All right, let's run this. So I run this query and then we go to here and we can say select rows and here you can see we have the order inserted so if i click here you can see that we have order id one customer name menu date and amount now if i go back to the order history select rows you can see there is also an entry there let's see so we have history id one order id one order inserted as action and time and date and now to edit the trigger you need to go to order there you will see this icon and you need to click on it then you need to find the triggers so see here indexes foreign keys triggers so when you go there and you will see here before insert after insert before update after update so you can see that we added the trigger after insert so you have after delete before delete after update before update you have all these triggers so we need to click here this is our trigger that we created and here after insert the one we matching here now here you can make changes you might want to do some other stuff here you might want to select something from somewhere or something like that 
So what are we going to do this time? We want to see another example. Let's let's do it on something else. This time before insert. A bookbench is that you can go here. So we have after insert, we need to be seeing plus sign here. So if you do, you can delete trigger from here. You can insert another. So before insert, we can click on this plus. It, you can see here it said orders underscore before underscore insert. It already created the uh, boilerplate for us. It's like so here what we can do inside beginning or end we can put our trigger content whatever okay so i'm going to put here some code and then i'm going to explain to you what exactly is happening here so here we are saying uh basically the trigger starts from here begin and ends here where at the end the given then we say if we are inserting data the total amount if it is less than zero so when we create an order uh the amount shouldn't be negative if it is less than zero then we are saying and it is going to create an adder and that adder is this message that we passed here cannot insert order with negative total amount so this is what is going to happen if we try to insert order with a negative amount so what we do here i'm gonna apply for me okay so this is going to be like this do you do you want to do it apply And it is applied finish now we have a trigger all right now we you can see that triggers all it's updated here as well so we have before insert trigger now to check this trigger is working all we need to do we need to run the previous query or we can alter it totally up to you let's do that what do we do here we go here insert into orders the amount should not be negative as we put there a check before inserting into orders so now i'm passing him in negative amount so let's run it so when i run it it is uh here you can see we got an error now if you notice here we have insert into order and there it says error code 11644 count insert order with negative total amount now if i go back to orders here edit and triggers go to our trigger i just put here hey cannot insert order all right i apply it now we need to again say here apply done finish this updates the trigger i'm gonna go back to the query it's still minus so we're gonna run it and this time you can see that adder is updated hey cannot insert order with negative value so we are successfully doing it now let's see it is inserting it in, uh, in the table select so like rows you see you will see only one record there only one row is there now if i go to order history there we also have only one record let's see another example in this example we want to delete the data from the orders table and the trigger should act once the data is deleted from orders table so i have the statement prepared window new sql click here and i put here the code okay now it is delimiter again the same slashes create trigger and after order delete this trigger will run then we have after delete this time on orders so it is going to be again here in orders for each row begins and then we are doing our sqls and then end and then we are saying delimiter back to semicolon all right so let's do it so i want to run this and have the so we got the success message there we have another trigger there now let's see how uh, what we do we delete so what i do is simply now i have another statement i say delete and from orders okay and currently we have i think only one order let's go there and select rows so we have their order id is one and customer name is Manu. so we can do this we can say uh, where order id is one okay so we want to run this we want to delete this uh, one record so what i do is select this statement run it and it is going to delete it so it is deleted now once it is deleted we should have a string added to order history saying order deleted so let's see go here select row now we have two option here 
and here you can see the second one says order deleted so once the order is deleted it is it came here and it's inserted it so we are working the triggers are doing their job as we should expect if i see here now select all from orders all right so we should have nothing in there so let's run it and we have no orders there hope you get the idea so we tried uh, we three triggers here three different triggers uh before after as well after delete so this is how triggers work and uh, you can use it you can execute multiple sql statements it's totally totally up to you <laughs>